Hello. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to use percent in reference to like parts of a whole or amounts and bases. So we're going to be kind of solving little problems that are missing one piece, kind of like solving equations with percentages. Recall from a previous lesson that percent means one like per 100. So cent comes from the word centennial, century, 100. And it's a ratio whose denominator is 100. If you scored, for example, if you scored a 92% on a quiz, that means that you earned 92 points out of 100 points. Now, I mean, there's situations where maybe your teacher grades, you know, maybe you made a six out of eight or a seven out of eight, and she converts that to percent. That's converting it to a, a, a ratio, a value where 100 is in, is in the denominator. And that's easier to, for us to see, you know, if you made a seven out of eight, you're like, well, then what is that? When you convert it to percent, it converts it to that percent per 100. So if the quiz were, were out of 100 points, then this is what percent it would equal. Anyway, uh, I digress. There are three important parts to finding the percent of a whole. A uh, percent is expressed with a percent sign. Mine always look like nines. I try to do better. I try to be better about this. Percent. The amount is the part of the whole. So when I say amount, I'm referring to like a piece of the whole, a part of the whole. It's usually the smaller number. And then the base is the whole thing. So the whole pie is the base. And then if you take a slice of the pie, that is the amount. And that will give us a percentage. I have a couple examples here to kind of show you what I mean by this terminology. So in the first example, it says 40 is. 25% of what number? So think about this logically. Math is logic. 40 represents 25%. That's an easy given because it says percent of some number. So 40 is representing a percentage of a pie or a pizza or whatever, some whole number, which means that my pieces are 25%, 40, let me do green so that I can keep my theme. 40 is representative of a piece of the whole number, which we don't know. Oh, I meant to do I want to stay with my theme here. We don't know what the whole number is. It's just, we know that 40 represents 25% of that. So now the next one, what percent, so we don't know the percent of 60 is five. So we're saying that Five represents a specific percentage of 60, which indicates that five is the smaller number, the amount that we're looking for, the piece that we're looking for out of the whole thing, 60. Five represents a specific percentage of 60. So that larger number is your whole, your base, the five, the smaller number is your amount, which is your piece. And then we would use that to find a percent. Last one, what is 55%? That one's given, that's nice. 55% of 90. So that means that we are missing, oh man, we're missing the amount. We do know that whatever the amount is represents 55% of the whole, which is 90. 
So that's kind of getting you used to the terminology, um, how each relate to each other and kind of how you can pick out what it's looking for. And we'll use that to solve these problems. We're actually going to find those missing pieces, of course. And we're going to kind of break down the wording here so that you know what to use where. A personage of the base is the amount. Percentage is written in decimal form when we're solving problems. Of translate to means or translates to multiplication. Spell that right. I hope multiplication. Uh -huh. The base is the entire amount. Is means whoops, equals, and the amount is the part or the piece or the fraction of the whole. So key things here, of means we're multiplying, is means equals, amount is usually gonna be the smaller number, base is gonna be the larger number, percentage needs to be converted. Okay, it's not, it's not too bad, I promise. So we're gonna use that to solve these problems that we already set up in the beginning. We've already done the legwork. 40 is 25% of some number. We need to convert this to decimal form. And then we're gonna focus on these words. So, 40 is means equals, whoops, 25% of means times. So 40 is 25% of means times some number that we don't know. And then we can solve it. We already know how to solve one step equation. So we can just solve this 40 equals 0.25x. We divide by 0.25 on both sides and we get 40 divided by 0.25. We should get a larger number than our part, our amount, and we do. We get 160 for the base. And if I just check my work, if I say 40, the part over the whole, this should equal 25%. It does. See, isn't that so nice? It's not bad. It's so fun. Okay, next one. What percent of 60 is five? And remember, we're going to be focusing on these words to set up our equation. What percent of 60 is five. And then for solving, we can, I like to rewrite that with the 60 in front. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we can use the commutative of commutative property of multiplication to change the order so that's legal, but you don't have to change it. In either case, we're going to solve by dividing by 60. So we type in five divided by 60 and we get 0.083 repeated, but it's asking for percent. So this is the decimal form of our percent, which means I need to convert it by multiplying by 100. I'll go, hmm. sorry, technical difficulties. There we go over one, two, that is 8.3%. That's all, that's all at once. So if I do, if I just check myself, I'm saying that 8.3% of 60 is five. 
I rounded, so it's a little bit off, but it's very close, which means I've done it correctly. If I want a few more decimal places of 60, I'm gonna get closer to five. So it's just because I rounded, that's why it's a little bit off. Last one. What is, change my color, 55%, that's 0.55 of 90. So we're looking for that smaller number. We're gonna use that to write our equation. What is 55% of 90? And then this one, X is already by itself. So we just have to multiply. This one's really easy. Times 90, 55% of 90 is 49.5. And that's all. Then we can check ourselves. We want to see if 49.5 of 90 out of 90 is indeed 55%. Yes, it checks out. So that is complete. That is all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.